Annyeong! Welcome to Delightful! Well, I may have missed Valentine's Day this year, but I'm one of those fools who gets into a holiday for the entire month anyway. <laughs> That's right, I'm making a super duper lovey-dovey doll. I love Valentine's Day! Hearts, chocolates, and of course the colors red, white, and pink! I like pink, can you tell? <laughs> Which is why this doll may surprise you. I've made dolls for this occasion before, but like, none of them scream Valentine's Day, do they? We need a character dressed in love core fashion. I'm talking hearts from head to toe, with a focus on the color red. Sound good? Let's get started. Claudine from Monster High will be our base for today. Let's begin with her outfit. For starters, I dug up every Valentine's-esque fabric I have in my fabric box. We've got ribbons, cottons, and chiffons in red, white, and pink. Surely we can come up with something using all this. As not to tempt myself though, because you know I would gravitate towards my favorite color, I removed all the pink fabric options. Ah, it hurts! Right off the bat, I knew she needed a heart-shaped bag. Using matte board cut into a heart, I glue the pieces to red cotton fabric, cut them out, add a touch more glue, and fold over the edges for a nice finish. I gathered some thin ribbon until it looked nice and ruffly, and glued that to the wrong side of the heart. Sandwich the rectangular piece in between the hearts to make it 3D. Using puffy paint, draw on your design. We could have gone with any number of the conversational candy hearts options, but I settled on the classic, hugs and kisses. Make sure that's dried before you finish because it'd be a shame to smudge it this close to the end. I made a handle out of a string of red and gold beads, then clip that onto the bag with a little clasp. Isn't it perfect? After my success with Toki's backpack, I knew I'd have to use this matte board plus fabric technique more often. Also, I hope you recognize the inspiration for this bag. When you were in elementary school, did you guys make Valentine's themed post boxes out of like tissue boxes and construction paper? Everyone in my class would make one and then we'd go around putting Valentine's into all our classmates boxes. Some kids would give out Valentine's with like a whole sucker tape to it and it was like, yes, score! <laughs> it was so much fun! I have fond memories of making that craft. As for showing you how I made the rest of her clothes, well, small confession here, I'm pregnant with my second child, hooray! But this first trimester has slammed me pretty hard with morning sickness this time around, so for the first two months of this year, I couldn't even get to the studio most days. It was rough. <laughs> so instead, during the moments when my toddler was asleep and I wasn't feeling nauseous, I took it upon myself to get a little hand sewing done at home. No camera, no good lighting, no footage. But I figure it's better to get a partial video out than no video at all. I hope you agree. Her sweater, which was sewn from a fuzzy sock, gets stamped all over it with a custom heart-shaped stamp I made out of a foam block. Paint on some acrylic and stamp, stamp, stamp until you've got a pattern. I found inserting strips of cardboard to be very useful in stretching out the fabric and keeping it flat for the stamp. And her glasses. No love core fashion influencer is complete without them. Trace two hearts onto a scrap piece of plastic packaging. Then tint the plastic red with a permanent marker. Cut out the hearts. And punch two tiny holes on either side with a pin. Using red jewelry wire to match, I twist and cut the temples and the bridge of the glasses. Feed those wire through the holes and pinch them in place with a pair of pliers. You don't even need to add glue. Aren't these fantastic? They look so legit, but we made them with really common materials. That's always satisfying. Outfit done! Looks pretty cute, huh? And this is me trying to make up for my lack of footage by quickly explaining what everything is. <laughs> now we just need the doll to wear them. 
let's turn our attention back to Claudine. Adorable as her ears are, they've got to go because I want a human character. Chop chop! I feel like I'm always cutting off the wolf family's ears. Have I ever kept them in place before? I don't think so. This presents us with two problems, giant holes in her head and a lack of human ears. I'm going to fix both with air dry clay. And while I'm at it, I fill in the smaller holes in her head that were left behind from the original doll's rooting process. Once the modifications dry, paint them to match using acrylics and matte varnish. And here she is. The werewolf has become human. Now we can approach her hair. I begin by penciling on thin lines, five on each side of her head for a total of ten lines, which will become cornrows. They look about even, so I paint them in with acrylics. Next, to get a finer level of detail, I switch to watercolor pencils. I go ahead and spray the doll with two coats of Mr. Super Clear Matte Sealant, which preps the surface for pencils. It's the same stuff I'll use during her face up later. I sketch in her temple curls, baby hairs, and the track pattern a braid makes when you do scalp braids. I think it's this detail in particular that really helps sell the illusion of actual cornrows. It looks pretty convincing and we haven't even added hair yet. I think I've improved a lot since I last tried this on Jade. Let's use the S curl 2mm size in black, complements of the doll planet. Pinch off a plug's worth of hairs from the main hank, fold them in half over your finger, slip it onto the reroute tool, and stab it into the head at a 90 degree angle. A little twist can help you get it in there. For this hairstyle, I insert three generously sized plugs at the base of each painted cornrow. I only plug these at the front, nothing down the rest of the cornrows. Yeah, you can see the clay popped out of her head already. The ear hole patches continue to be a problem right up until the very end of the reroute. I just had to keep re-gluing and patching it. <laughs> Darn your ear holes, Claudine! Stick the head on a pike to make the braiding step easier. Separate the three plugs and weave a tiny little braid. Braid each set of three all the way across her forehead. Separate them back out and one at a time, use the rooting tool to punch the end of the braid into the head. You can use a touch of glue to help keep the braids in place if you want, but I found the tension of the hair itself to be sufficient. Perfect. Now we can simply fill in the back of her head with plugs like normal. Once you're done, pour glue into the head to secure the plugs from the inside for added security. I also want to make sure those dang earplugs stay in place. <laughs> If you do attempt a hairstyle like this, might I suggest not using Claudine. Pinch wire loops around her hair for a touch of sparkly decoration and to hold the ends together. I also added some cute hair clips in the back. These are inspired by the butterfly hair clips craze from the early 2000s. Y2K fashion is having a resurgence right now and I'm living for it. Of course, I made them look like hearts instead of butterflies, but the shape is similar. The braids in front are kind of sticking out funny, but we'll take care of them after the face up. If you're thinking this doll needs heart-shaped eyes, I must agree. Begin with blush. I'm using Mungyo Soft Pastels dusted on by brush. Applying pastels to the eyes, nose, lips, and cheeks can breathe life into the plastic, and it always looks great. That's literally the only thing I've done so far, and she already looks way better. Hesitantly block in the first pass lines using a color similar to the skin. That way, if you mess up and need to erase, it should come off easily. 
Because I chose to follow the existing grooves and mold of the face, it was really easy to draw the eyes. The artists at Mattel made sure of that. Once you're happy with the preliminary line work, you can brave the bolder colors. I use black to thicken her lash line, darken the eyebrows, and deepen the crevasses of her lips and nostrils. I also add white to the eyes and some highlights around the eyes, although it'll take a few layers of sealant to build up opacity. Inevitably though, I will switch to gouache for that quick flat color boost I crave. I fill in the hearts on her cheeks, the hearts in her eyes, and pump up the whites. Outline the pupils and beef up the red iris color, and now we can add the finishing touches with... Pearl X powders! Remember these? I used to use them all the time. Feels like it's been a while. Dot some iridescent shimmer into the pupils, and also along her eyelid for a glittery eyeshadow effect. So cute! I meant to put the head back on before the face up. I completely forgot. Oops. You run the risk of stretching or cracking the face if you're too handsy shoving the head back on afterwards. <laughs> Let's heat up the plastic as much as we can to loosen things up. Then gently squeeze the temples and guide the body back in place. Whew. Success. Now that the hair is unmasked, we can secure those braids. Insert a pin first to create a small hole on the face, then stick in a more decorative wire. There, it just looks like another hair decoration, right? Our lovey-dovey heart-tastic Valentine's Day doll is done! Let's assemble the components and enjoy the photo shoot. It's the obvious choice for a name, but honestly, what else can I call her? Say hello to Valentine! Because her bag is inspired by a post box for love letters, one might assume she's kind of a modern Cupid delivering confessions and notes to people's crushes. Something like that. <laughs> I wonder exactly how many hearts are on her person? I didn't count. What do you reckon? 50 or more? Thank you so much for bearing with me on this unexpectedly slow start to the new year. I hope it was worth the wait. I had so much fun making this cutie and I hope you love her too. I've also learned my lesson that for the time being with my current life situation, I probably shouldn't make any holiday themed dolls that have a set deadline. <laughs> I simply cannot be trusted to stick to a schedule right now. Anyway, I hope you had a wonderful February, and please like, comment, and if you enjoyed the video, subscribe! I've got a lot of exciting new plans for this year, believe it or not, and you won't want to miss out! Stay artsy! Annyeong!